Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we are going to discuss about ENTs OSPI and mainly X rays will be shown in this video. First, from some other sources, and then we will recall it from Shruti Dhingra as well. Inshallah, these are most frequently asked, or I must say that these are the least points that you must know in order to appear in your exams. Okay. First of all, I will show you some normal views of the X ray. If you know that what is the normal X ray looks like then it will become easy for you people to diagnose any abnormality as well okay so let's start in the first picture shown here in front of you is shown the occlusal view of the x-ray and what is the occlusal view in the occlusal view you can easily see the floor of the uh, mouth and you can also see the roof of the mouth as well and lower jaw can also be seen clearly here what is this i will show you later and uh, in this view what is this view? This view is actually the OPG view or orthopentomogram. Okay, orthopentomogram or panoramic radiograph. It is also called panoramic radiograph or we call it as OPG orthopentomograph as well. And here you can easily see the easily appreciate the lower portion of the face. Teeth can also be seen here. Here lower jaw can also be seen and upper jaw can also be seen clearly. Here is the abnormality shown. I will tell it to you later. Here you can see, you must be knowing already that what is this view? This is the lateral view and in this view what can be seen easily? In this view you can see the orbits, you can see the frontal sinus lateral view, maxillary sinus as well, upper jaw, lower jaw and here you can also see the sphenoidal sinus and mainly the extent of the sphenoidal sinus can also be seen here and above it here is cella tarsica. And then here you can see that here the patient's mouth is open, right? You can see that here the patient's mouth is open. When you uh, uh, when you are taking the x-ray, you tell the patient to open the mouth. Why you ask the patient to open the mouth? Because you want to see uh, spinoidal sinus from here. And here are the maxillary sinuses. This is the orbit. These are the frontal sinuses. And this is the ethmoidal sinus. And this is the nasal septum. Upper and lower jaw can also be seen here. Next here shown is Caldwell's view okay what is Caldwell's view Caldwell's view is actually the uh, you can say that you ask the patient when you uh, when you ask the patient to place his or her nose and forehead touching with the um, fill like this is the fill and the patient's nose and forehead must touch the film in order to take this view this is Caldwell's view and it is best to see the frontal sinuses here frontal sinuses can be seen easily and we can also see uh, other sinuses as well but this view is mainly used to see the frontal sinus okay but here is the uh, water's view and what in the case of water's view what you ask the patient you ask the patient that his or her nose and chin should touch the film okay and then you take the PA view it is also known as occipitomental view and it is best to see the maxillary sinuses like here maxillary sinuses can be seen easily and if you see here here frontal sinuses can be seen easily okay this is the occlusal view in the case of occlusal view film is placed between the teeth of the patient okay so let's come towards the uh, normal x-ray or it is it is not normal actually but uh, in order to see any x-ray which structures you must see you must see the frontal sinuses of the patient see orbits of the patient see the maxillary sinuses of the patient and then see the uh, nasal septum and any opacity here in the nasal cavities as well and uh, here uh, you can see what is shown in this picture in this picture actually if you see the maxillary sinuses here is somewhat uh, you can see that here is a partition above it there is somewhat black color and below it there is white color you know that in the inside the sinuses there is air and air on x-ray appears in black color but if any fluid or any blood or any other secretions are present then it appears in the white color here white color shows that there are somewhat secretions are present and above it there is air so air fluid level in order to see the uh, uh, maxillary sinus you have to see its size compare it with the other sinus and then see that its color either it is black shadow or it is white or opacity or haziness has been seen and if you see air fluid level in this uh, sinus you can easily see that it, this is the case of the sinusitis and mainly maxillary sinusitis is shown here. 
number two thing that you can see in the case of the um, sinusitis is that you can see here this is the border outlining this if this outlining um, is somewhat thickened this is the mucosal hypertrophy and this also occurs in the case of the sinusitis and if you doesn't appreciate or if you uh, if you are confused that either it is hypertrophy or not then compare it with the other sinus like here here uh, almost both the sinuses have the almost equal thickening in its border lines so it is the normal mm, uh, i mean i must say that this is there is no hypertrophy of the mucosa but it is the case of the sinusitis okay so here here again in your exam arrows are must placed uh, where there is any abnormality like here you can see that arrow is placed here here air fluid level is shown i hope so that you can appreciate it again here somewhat opacities are present in the frontal sinus as well so here is the frontal sinusitis and maxillary sinusitis shown both in this picture in the frontal sinus there are some indentations these indentations are actually the normal and if these indentations or hospitations are lost then it shows that it is frontal sinusitis and mainly chronic frontal sinusitis okay okay so now let's move towards the shruti dhingra here you can see which abnormality uh, let's see here uh, what is shown frontal sinus is almost normal as arrow is placed here so you must think of or you must see here clearly that here somewhat haziness is shown okay and which view is this first of all see that it is your skull okay and number two see that which view is this this is water's view water's view of the skull or water's view of the paranasal sinuses you must say that if this is the water's view of the paranasal sinuses with the open mouth examiner will give you almost half marks after uh, once you write this okay and number two thing that you should can uh, uh, write here is that haziness or opacification of the maxillary sinus has been shown here this is mainly the left and this is the right one here almost this area is black no abnormality no abnormality almost uh, orbits almost look normal here and here num in number two picture here uh, the arrow is placed again again this is the water's view and here you can see that in the right maxillary sinus there is the opacity clearly seen opacity okay and if you compare their outlining uh, like border lines then these are almost comparable so you cannot say that there is mucosal hypertrophy so this is the case of the right maxillary sinusitis here again you can see that it is not so much clear view but this is again the water's view and if you zoom out this picture and you can see that somewhat dome shaped structure is present here and this is mainly the globular cyst shown here okay and uh, in the case of left this is right this is left in the case of the left maxillary sinus which is not clearly visible here but you can compare its outlining here with it this outlining and it is somewhat hypertrophic okay so you can say that there is hypertrophy of the left maxillary sinus or sino sinus you can easily appreciate it here and compare these two in this picture shown the lateral view and lateral view of the nasal bone you can see that the lower portion lower two-third is made up of cartilage lower two-third of your nasal septum is made up of cartilage upper one third is made up of bone but here two arrows are shown and at that places these nasal bones are fractured again here you can see that uh, nasal bone is fractured this is the lateral view of the skull and this is the occlusal view as floor of the mouth is shown and what is this this is mainly the radio opaque radio opacity shown here so stone here can be the stone in your submandibular duct and what is here look at it carefully just look at it carefully that here you can see that this sinus is normal okay it is in black color but here you can see that all the area is opaque as well as here the structures are normal like the border of the maxillary sinus is normal but here distortion of the structures has been occurred very much as compared to here here is no distortion of the structure seen here but here is the distortion of the structure seen so this is the carcinoma of the right maxillary sinus because of because here soft tissue expansion has been shown and there is no soft tissue expansion shown or you can appreciate the borders of the maxillary sinus clearly here but you cannot appreciate the borders of the uh, maxillary sinus and even it cannot be appreciated at all so this is maxillary sinus carcinoma and what is shown here here you can see that this is mainly the uh, stone stone in the duct of the salivary gland you can simply write the stone in the duct of the salivary gland but because here 
in some mandibular slab glands are present below the mandible so you can say that there is a, a stone in the some mandibular slab gland duct and here here uh, you must know you uh, you must be knowing already that on the lateral side parotid gland is present so this may be the stone in the duct of the parotid gland so that was all thank you very much